All right, so first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the dash out and uh, try to see if the three and a half inch speakers that I ordered fit. Uh, in the beginning of the video, I actually mentioned that I was gonna do six and a half, so uh, my recycled speakers from my cord, and I was gonna do it in the kick panel. Uh, there's not enough space, and they make fiberglass molds, but I feel like it'd be in the way, honestly, if I put the speakers here, uh, you know, I'd be kicking it constantly because it is a manual car. I feel like that's more for automatic cars. So, I guess I'm gonna try the three and a half inch, and now we're gonna have to pull out this crack dash, and hopefully we don't crack it or snap it even more than it already is. So, let's get to doing that. Eight screws, if I'm not mistaken, that hold the dash in. Uh, there's going to be four on the bottom right here, and then four up top in the uh, heater vents. So I'm just going to be using a impact to get in there and remove all the screws. And once that's done, we'll try to pull the dash out. So now that the screws are out, this dash should just be free to come out. But of course, it is an old car, and it's not going to want to come out. As you can see, it's still stuck pretty badly on there, and uh, all the screws are removed. So. We're gonna finagle with it for a little bit and uh, it'll come out. So all I had to do was just pull towards myself and the dash is coming out. Now I'm risking it by just <laughs> carrying it with one hand, but I'm sure it'll be fine. There we go. And she's out. So we're gonna place this somewhere nice. Uh, probably just on the floor. I mean, it can't, get, it can't get any worse than it already is. And now we can assess the three and a half inch speakers. So, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, my dash just hanging out over here. And these speakers don't even appear to be speakers on. Ah, they look horrific. So we're gonna pull these out and uh, try to mount the new ones and hopefully the magnets on the new speakers aren't too bad. What I ordered for the front are scars. So I've always been a hater of scars. Uh, I think they're, they're decent speakers, but they're Quality is absolute garbage. Uh, they usually don't hold up to their power ratings. Um, so these claim, what do they claim? 80, 60 watts RMS. Uh, that's, I mean, we're never going to come even close to that with our $20 head unit. So I think we should be fine with these. But we'll see. Uh, I just wanted to test out what all the hype is about and see if these speakers are any good. But obviously they're going to be really underpowered until I get a five channel amplifier for this car and we run a sub and then we can, you know, actually enjoy the true sound. So yeah, we'll get around to removing whatever these are and uh, we'll do some, some new speaker wiring because you can see this is pretty sketchy. Okay, so I took the two little bolts out and we can assess just how bad of in condition this guy is. Because you can see the cone is completely deteriorated. Uh, this, these things are absolutely shot. So we'll just uh, let them hang for now because we are going to run new wires. And I'll try to mount the new ones. Uh, there might be an issue with my dash because there's not much space in here, but we'll see. Okay, so we have two issues with the newer speakers. Uh, first things first, it does not fit in there because the magnet is so big. Uh, so what I figured I was going to do, I'm going to gut the speaker completely and then make a bracket for it. Um, which will solve the second issue and hopefully the first issue of now we can always just, you know, space this out. But the second issue is that the, the way this mounts doesn't fully seal the hole, the factory hole, but the factory speaker does. So I'm just going to cut this out and it'll be a perfect seal over top of the hole. Um, and then as well, we can mount the other speaker in and it should solve both the issues. Hopefully then the dash goes over it, but that will be for later. So now I'm just gonna cut the entire cone off and then just leave the actual bracket and uh, then we'll try mounting it. Okay, so my theory works. As you can see, it's nice and tight in there now and it's uh, it's all bolted down. Obviously, I'm gonna have to take it back out. But yeah, I just shaved the, the dome off of the, uh, the old three and a half inch speaker and then uh, slipped this guy in here and now it clearances both this guy, which is what it's hitting on, and now it's a perfect seal around the um, the actual dash itself, so the sound quality should be better. So I'm just going to pull this out. I'm going to do the same exact thing to the other side, and then we can start running wires from here out through here. So I unbolted the amp. Uh, I'm just going to have to disconnect these two wires, and I'll just remove it completely because there's no use for it. Now as for this absolute mess of wires over here, as you can see, nothing was even soldered, they were just twisted together, so whoever touched this previously is an absolute idiot. 
Um, so I'm gonna have to disassemble this entire mess of wires and then uh, we can start running new wires. So one short trip to AutoZone later, we have a fuse tap uh, because we need accessory power for the head unit. And since I removed that entire nest of wires, as you can see, it's uh, looking pretty clean in there. Uh, there's nothing left from previous uh, wiring. So we have to run everything brand new. Uh, we already have a ground, uh, which I'm gonna run from these uh, mounting screws right here. Uh, I checked that it is a solid ground, it is, and it will be fine for that tiny head unit. Uh, I'm just gonna run a 14 gauge wire for that guy. And for constant 12, which the head unit requires, we're just gonna run that from the battery. And more specifically, not from the battery, but from this little guy right here, the uh, distribution block. So we're gonna run that through the firewall, and then we have our three main wires that we're gonna need. Everything else is just gonna be speaker wires. So we're gonna do that now. Uh, now we can run our accessory wire from this this fuse panel right here and Next we can run the ground and finally we can run the 12 volts. So I'm gonna start doing that right now Okay, so this is gonna be extremely simple if I can find proper fuses Which we do have a pack of fuses right here. So with our fuse tap, you're gonna want to replace uh, Or the fuse tap look like this right so this goes into uh, where you pull that fuse out of and then this fuse right here, the 20 amp, which I pulled out of the fuse box itself, goes into the first slot. And the second slot, as you can see, the one that's closer to the actual wire, we're going to plug in another fuse. And I'm going to use the same 20 amp. That should be plenty for the radio. And uh, obviously, my wiring can handle it. So now that we have that, we just plug it back into the same exact location, crimp a wire onto the end, and that's going to be our accessory wire. So just plug that in there nicely. So it doesn't interfere with anything. Just like that, that is a very perfect fit. Okay. And now I can grab a yellow wire because usually you run yellow for accessory. And since it is accessory, uh, we don't need anything crazy. So you can just run a nice little 16 gauge, which I have a whole spool of right here. So we're going to take our 16, which is nicely taped down. We haven't used this wire yet. Uh, I'm going to just... I'm going to just strip the end of this wire. Just enough for it to crimp onto there. There we go. Twist it. And then we will crimp it to that little blue crimp connector that I showed you earlier. And that is tight and it's not going anywhere. So now we'll just run the approximate amount of wire that we'll need. I'm just going to give myself a little extra feet. There we go. That should be enough. Just going to cut the end of it. And now we can route it nicely with zip ties over to uh, the place where it's going to mount. So the thing is, I've done the same exact thing with Alex's car. Uh, because when he bought the GT350, the way he convinced me to get into that car is because at first I didn't like Fox Buddies. I thought they were ugly cars. Um, didn't really like them, was not a fan of them. But he convinced me into working on that car by purely saying, hey, redo the entire audio system from scratch. And that's that's what got me into that. And that's kind of what got me into the Fox Bodies. Because then the more I started working on them, the more I realized how simple they are and how easy they are to work on. And also just how inexpensive they are. Unless you have a rust bucket SVO, which parts are hard to find. And... Uh, then it gets pretty pricey, but other than that, these are pretty cheap cars to work on, and that's how I fell in love with them. All started from music. Okay, so we are in luck, because as you can see, I placed my uh, flashlight in the engine bay, and you can see a nice little hole over there. So that, that, that light that's shining through that is my flashlight, so we don't really have to worry about grommets or anything like that. Um, or poking through the factory line. There is already a hole here. So I'm just gonna, cause there is a wire running through it and that's actually the hood release cable. Um, but I'm gonna cut a grommet in half and then just put uh, that grommet in there just so that wire doesn't get cut up on the sheet metal. So I'm gonna do that and then we can run the power wire, which is gonna be nice. Okay, so now I have the grommet installed. Took a little bit of wrestling. Now we just take a red wire uh, and just pull it through. Actually, push it through to the engine bay. If we go into the engine bay, 
And as you can see, which I cannot, there should be a red wire coming out somewhere. Um, apparently not. <laughs> Maybe I ended up pulling it out by accident. That's exactly what happened. Of course. That's just my luck. Well, I'll do it again. Attempt number two of trying to find this pretty red wire. And as you can see, there's that little red poking through. So I'm gonna have to fish my fingers in there somehow through this entire rat nest of, uh, of hoses. You gotta love the SVO for that. And here we have it. So I just pulled just enough through so I can route it to that distribution block. We'll throw a nice little crimp connector on here, secure it, and uh, that will be that. So I have this wire right here. I crimped it and I'm just gonna slide some heat shrink over it and she's ready to go on this terminal. Uh, because we want constant 12, we're not running this off a of starter. You want the side that's connected to the battery. So we follow this wire, it loops back around and it is the battery positive contact terminal. So we want it on this guy. So I'm just gonna take this guy off, slide this on here with a little eyelet and then we'll be good. Okay, so now we have our three main wires right here. Uh, as I mentioned, I grounded it right here and this is gonna cover it, obviously. Of course, the Makita charger has to make noise. Thanks, Makita charger. Anyways, um, so now we can start running the speaker wires in pairs and I'm not gonna do whatever the hell the previous person did where they clamped the wire down with the speaker. I'm gonna actually run it through and underneath the dash. Um, there's a way to fish it through and uh, I'm gonna figure that out, but yeah So now we can do the front speakers and then half the interior is gonna have to come apart to do the rear speakers But let's do let's do the not so tedious part first, obviously So this is the basic principle of how I'm gonna run these wires. Uh, there's an access hole right here So you don't have to actually squeeze it. There's an access hole for the wire right here So you just pull the wire through here and then I'm just gonna go through the amplifier hole because there's nothing's gonna be here I'm gonna take the amp out and as you can see, it runs nicely through here. And now we know that green and white are gonna be our left uh, front speakers. Now we can do the same thing for the right side. So now that the front has uh, the wires ready for itself, now we can start pulling the back apart and hopefully I might have a little trick up, a, I might have a little trick up my sleeve for how we can not disassemble the entire interior. And that's hoping that we can pull the old wires through and then pull new ones with it. So we'll try that right now and see if we even have wires here. And we do have speaker wire here. I think it's part of a harness and we cannot pull. So, okay, I guess the interior is coming out, sadly. Hopefully I don't have to do too much of it. So I have the door panel pried back. So now I can finally run some fresh wires through here, as you can see. Uh, so now I just literally need to pull this piece off and this little kick panel. And then we can just route a nice wire from the center console out through here, all the way to the back. And out through this hole for the speakers. So I'll get around to doing that. It's a very simple process. There's not really a point in recording this. I'm just recording it to show... I guess the steps taken, but I don't need to record me actually running the wire. I'm pretty sure you're not to run a wire yourself. I have my wires ran. I didn't want to record any of it. Uh, it's just a pain. Plus we covered how to take apart the interior in the first uh, part of the build. So if you want to check that out, you can watch that. But I do have both wires ran. So now all I have to do is just transfer the five by sevens into these grills and attach spade connectors onto each of these looms that I made and then finally wire up the head unit put everything back together on the dash and we're finished okay so all the wires are uh they have connectors on them I actually plugged the speakers in as well so all the speakers are in this is routed nicely uh, through the access holes that were made uh by Ford unlike the last person who ran wires here so now I have this guy soldered up, at least part of the uh, harness that's responsible for turning on the head unit. So now I can just take the head unit itself and uh, plug it in. Ew! You flexing on him. Do you have a flashlight? I'll shine here. I'll hold it. So if I just plug this guy in. Oh, it's right there. Right, so 
So he's plugged in and now I just need to give it some accessory voltage. And it's on. So we're good. Okay, attempt number two. So, battery's plugged in, everything's hooked back up. Let's see. And she's on. Does she play anything? Yup. We have static. That's pretty loud, I'd say. But these are playing for sure. I'm wondering if the hatch ones are playing. Let's see. Oh yeah, you can hear him going. Okay, nice. So, that's a successful speaker install. Now, we are gonna go, now we're gonna go for a nice little drive. Uh, feel out how the strangers feel because they still need to be driven in. And uh, I can finally listen to some music while I'm driving it. So, thanks for watching.